speaking of the wokest of them all, President Biden very wokely approves controversial Alaska oil drilling plan. Has given the go ahead for a controversial oil drilling scheme in Alaska inside the Arctic Circle. Environmentalists say it's a carbon bomb, with some indigenous groups warning it will damage local wildlife and traditional hunting practices. But others have welcomed the move, saying the investment will create much needed jobs. Gary O'Donoghue has that story. Alaska, home to some of America's last remaining undisturbed landscapes. But one oil company says under this freezing expanse lies decades of untapped oil and the potential to ensure US energy security into the future. The company, Conoco Phillips, has already begun exploratory work, and the go-ahead from the Biden administration will mean more than 200 wells being sunk and hundreds of miles of new roads. We are already in a climate emergency, and so every single drop added to our climate emissions is sending us into a direction of complete irreversible climate impacts. The campaign to stop Willow generated more than a million letters to the White House and a backlash among campaigners on social media. Gen Z will not accept the Willow Project moving forward. It's one of the most powerful movements ever. Bullying or activism works. In an attempt to offset criticism, the Biden administration has announced drilling bans on nearly 16 million acres of land and sea in Alaska. This is the funniest part. Because they'll take, like, non-viable lands. That this corporation has no interest in fucking drilling anyway. And turn around and go... See, that's progress. See, we stopped them from drilling other places. We'll let them drill here. But these places that they had no interest in drilling at, well, they will never drill there. As well as curbing the scale of development. In a statement, the Department of the Interior said it was substantially reducing the size of the Willow project by denying two of the five drill sites proposed by Conoco Phillips. And it said the actions will create an additional buffer from exploration and development near the Chishekpuk Lake caribou herd. This decision could cost Joe Biden politically. In his 2020 election campaign, he vowed to end new drilling on federal land and some in his own party will see this as a betrayal. Gary Donahue, BBC News, Washington. President Biden is expected to sign a new executive order. Yeah. I honestly feel like, I feel that targeting the supply is counterproductive because all it does is make the incentive of drilling more valuable. I feel like we need to heavily target and aggressively attack the demand of oil and property to go after it. Alaska's unemployment rate is 3.8%. Why are these much needed jobs? Because the media doesn't give a fuck. The media also, okay. This is a good take. This is a good steal, man, um, which I will respond to in a second. Um, yeah, it's not betrayal. Democrats and Republicans are actually on the same side. They, they, will say, they will say these are much needed jobs, and they also talk to one tribe that's getting paid, I think, $35 billion or something to basically do marketing for the project. So they're like, oh, we might offset your hunting and the way that you self-sustain with this uh, massive infrastructure project, but we'll give you billions of dollars in return to buy the food, basically. Um, that's what I've seen thus far. And, and they will bring that up. That's why some people, like, that, that's why the article that was covering it and all articles, as a matter of fact, that have covered the story so far have been like, well, some people are actually on board with this. 
Like some some local tribes are on board with this. Like they always do that. Um. But yeah. Okay. The unfortunate reality is that like a lot of those tribes are a lot of those tribes that get the money that doesn't adequately uh, uh, uh that doesn't adequately address the needs that they have um i wonder if there was another there's got to be more on this than what we've seen um like a climate town video or something like there's got to be like a climate town video NPR mentioned a potential lawsuit the company might have due to drilling there in the past. I don't know the details, but they mentioned that Biden just settled that instead of losing. Yeah, that's the other part of it. Okay. Uh, the other part of it is that, like, the company owns that land, and they could have taken it up to the Supreme Court, and they would have definitely lost, or uh, the company would have won. We can come on, back let's stay on. We're, we're staying on this issue. Number one, no more subsidies for fossil fuel industry. No more drilling on federal lands. No more drilling, including offshore. No ability for the oil industry to continue to drill, period. Ends. Number one. I just want to give him a chance to respond okay. and then we can come right. back. Let's yeah, I mean, of course he lied. That's crazy. I said no more. Not no more. Multiple news organizations. Biden to reject the project, warning it'll create a carbon bomb. In advance of approving the Willow project, the Biden administration also announced on Sunday steps to reduce oil drilling and other parts. What? It's kind of off topic, my friend. We're talking about high speed rail and hey, argue that high speed rail is not worth the ecological output that construction causes. I was wondering what your take was. You don't want to hear what my take is about your friend that just said that. Like, literally. Your friend is a fucking idiot. He's wrong. Unless he's like one of those anarcho-primitivists, in which case you should fucking lock your baboon friend into a fucking cage, okay? Obviously don't do that. I'm joking. But uh, your friend's brain should be studied in a fucking zoo. What an absolutely idiotic fucking take, dude. Holy fuck! Like, the amount of... The amount of carbon pollution that is offset by utilizing trains, okay, which I don't know if you know this, is literally carrying hundreds of people, if not thousands of people, from point A to point B at any given fucking moment. The amount of cars, car caused carbon pollution that is being offset with the utilization of public transport greatly, greatly wipes out the original small amount of debt that construction causes. Are you fucking stupid? What does your friend think cars drive on? Dirt? Does your friend think cars get around on dirt? They go on roads! How do you build the fucking roads? unimaginably dumb stop don't come to me with this dumb shit ever again oh my god parts of the arctic this includes barring future oil and gas leasing for three million acres of federal waters in the arctic ocean and limiting drilling in a further 13 million acres in the national petroleum reserve in alaska's north slope Kristen monso of the center for biological diversity criticized the biden plan saying quote protecting one area of the arctic so you can destroy another doesn't make sense and it won't help the people and wildlife who will be upended by the willow project they said we go now to North Pole, Alaska, where we're joined by Sikinik Malpan, executive director of the Sovereign Inupiat for a Living Arctic. It's great to have you back. Thanks so much for joining us, Sikinik. Can you talk about what you understand is being announced today? Well, uh, recently on Friday um, afternoon, the Bloomberg report came out saying that there were speculations that the Biden administration will approve 
the three pad um, plan instead of the five pad original plan. Um, and now we're <clears throat> hearing that he will make his decision Monday um, at about 9 a.m., but we're not for sure. Um, while campaigning in 2020, then presidential candidate Joe Biden said, quote, no more drilling on federal lands, period. This is candidate Biden responding to a question about his position on drilling in the Arctic. Yes, he made and a I lot think of I'm the only one, maybe not the only one, only one running who's been up in the Arctic Circle. I've been, remember the great oil spill that occurred? And I watched when I went up there and I went up in a helicopter up in the North Slope and saw what was going on and saw what was happening as the glaciers began to melt and how the caribou and everyone, I mean, there's a lot going on up there. Uh -huh. And it's a real gigantic problem. And by the way, no more drilling on federal lands, period, 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 period. <laughs> Well, the Arctic Circle is a disaster to do that. So that was candidate Damn. Biden. And again, the little part we missed at the beginning of what the candidate said was, I'm completely, totally opposed to drilling in the Arctic. Uh, Sikhanik Malpin, describe this project. Um, what is the Willow Project and what you understand President Biden's announcing today? Well, this is the um, biggest oil and gas leasing project that's on public lands right now. It is a massive um, project that would be happening in the North Slope. Closest community would be Milksit. And this would completely <clears throat> encircle the community in oil and gas, which already has Prudhoe Bay, Alpine. Um, and this is just the start of the project because this could um, green light for further exploration, further development. Um, and this project would emit so much carbon, it would actually double the amount that Biden had promised that he would reduce. Um, and so all of his plans to reduce the CO2 being released uh, would be nullified by this project and then putting back um, double what he said he was going to reduce. And can you talk about why you've invested so much time and energy into protesting this and the two parts of the plan that's being announced today? Yes, we, um, I want to say personally, I've been trying to fight this project for about four years. And on a um, more personal level, my mother lives in Nokset, my family is from Nokset. And although I wasn't raised there, I have a deep connection and love for the community. And in 2018, I was invited to go to um, an air quality monitoring system uh, planning session. And currently, ConocoPhillips owns the only air quality monitoring system um, in place in Nokset. And they also own most of the research that is quoted for the safety of this project to go forward. So um, we went over the top 10 pollutants that are put out by ConocoPhillips um, that's required to be put to the EPA and what the possible um, impact is from being exposed to those pollutants like cancer, respiratory illness, um, <clears throat> and, and other things, even changing the sex in the womb of a child from uh, male to female. And in that um, session, there was community members, the youth council, Bro, and a lot of the American government will not stop until, <clears throat> until every tribal area is impacted by, uh, like carcinogens, uh, carcinogen uh, contaminants. It's just like, they literally are like, no, we have to make sure that every fucking reservation has no fucking water supply and have a bunch of people getting cancer. This is the, this is the true secret agenda. They're like, sorry, our forefathers tried to genocide y'all and we couldn't really finish the job. So I'm just, I'm doing everything I can to continue it. It's crazy. Of us realized that we had seen these occurrences in our family. We had seen increase in cancer, respiratory illnesses. And in 2012, there was a blowout, a Repsol blowout, and that caused one child to be medevac from the village, another one to um, have permanent um, health problems with their respiratory um, system. And many people have complained recently there was a gas leak. Um, near Nuxet in the Alpine field, and they didn't evacuate the village. They said that they were fine, but many people self-evacuated because children were complaining of nausea, headaches, 
um, and not feeling well. And so um, currently there is no plan put into place to help evacuate or keep the community of Nilsit safe. And um, as I learned more about this project and its impacts, not just to the community and the public health, um, but the climate impacts were significant. The Arctic is warming at four times the rate um, than the rest of the world. And while many people speculate climate change, we're living it. We're seeing in the Yukon River, they haven't been able to fish for many years, um, subsistence fishing. We are seeing caribou that are showing star signs of starvation. We're seeing fish pop up with mold. Um, and <clears throat> this project is going to accelerate those issues and create food insecurity and many, many issues that is not just going to affect Milkset or the eight um, communities in the North Slope, but the entire Arctic itself. And then of course, globally, it's going to affect people for uh, climate change. And so this project um, we're concerned about for those reasons, um, but we also wanna transition away from oil and gas. And this is lock us into oil and gas for the next 30 years. And so, and we wouldn't actually see any of the benefits economically for 10 years. Um, so this would be something that, you know, a catastrophe for Biden, who had promised that he would transition us into clean energy. And what is also concerning is that systematically, we've seen that small rural um, places like this, time and time again, coal, gold mining, um, have had been in an economic hostage situation where they're um, told that the only way that they can get basic necessities like running water and plumbing and such um, is to sacrifice their health their lands, their food security, and um, so many more consequences from this project. Uh, former U.S. Vice President Al Gore, longtime environmentalist, told The Guardian, the proposed expansion of oil and gas drilling in Alaska is recklessly irresponsible. The pollution it would generate will not only put Alaska Native and other local communities at risk, it's incompatible with the ambition we need to achieve a net zero future. We don't need to prop up the fossil fuel industry with new multi-year projects that are a recipe for climate chaos. Instead, we must end the expansion of oil, gas and coal and embrace the abundant climate solutions at our fingertips, he said. Now, according to The New York Times, Willow would be the largest new oil development in the United States, expected to pump out 600 million barrels of crude over 30 years. Burning all that oil could release nearly 280 million metric tons of carbon emissions into the atmosphere. On an annual basis, that would translate into 9.2 million metric tons of carbon pollution, equal to adding nearly 2 million cars to the roads each year. The United States, the second biggest polluter on the planet after China, emits about 5.6 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide annually, The New York Times wrote. Um, um, so, yes, environmental activists uh, across the political spectrum are calling this a carbon bomb. Sikonik, talk about ConocoPhillips and who pushed this project forward. What's really funny about this, and this is the one aspect of conservative commentary that is absolutely undeniably true, is that when Biden does it, it doesn't get the same amount of coverage as Trump. Donald Trump tried to pull out of the Paris Climate Agreement, uh, Paris Climate Accord, and everyone was like, what the fuck, dude? He's killing us! That was just like a handshake and a promise. You know what I mean? Like the top of the hour ad break. Handshake and a promise. It's going to be served to you at the top of the hour. Sometimes it's going to be eight minutes late. Sometimes it's going to be right on the dot. But it's still coming, Right? Because at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. By subscribing, by uh, um, using your Amazon Prime account and connecting it to your Twitch account. You can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky. Anyway. Here's the three-minute break. Now, this is way more serious. The amount of carbon released from the Arctic is going to be insane. There's 4x the amount of carbon under permafrost in the atmosphere. Yeah, I mean, oops, you dropped this link. I mean, the, look, listen. 
It seems like the scientific American has been taken over by wokesters who are pushing the Chinese they-them agenda. China invents $546 billion in clean energy, far surpassing the U.S. Yeah, like I said, um, this is another byproduct of the woke Marxist uh, they-them agenda. People are saying, Top G in the chat. Please stop. Please stop spamming Top G in the chat. Please stop spamming Top G in the sh chat. He's bad. And also Marxist. And also gay. Their goal is to they themify us. Okay, anyway, I mean, yeah, China is a big polluter, but they're spending more than us right now in, in renewable Phillips, energy initiatives. China um, has a huge hand in everything that happens in Alaska, um, politically, locally, in the public education. And recently, Rosemary Atungarup, the mayor of Nuxit, put out a letter um, with other council members and the president of Native Village of Nuxit as well, stating um, that this project would be detrimental to the people there um, but um, it would also be a huge climate mistake. And um, as we've we've seen, have the reason why half the reason why people say global warming is a Chinese conspiracy is literally because of their ownership over cobalt and lithium, right? Like, they say it's a, it's a Chinese conspiracy because, like, China owns the future of energy, or at least as far as we understand it. We maintained the... We maintained a big chunk of the fossil fuel game. Not only did we have it, but also had set up allegiances... Whereas for, um, for China, they own the future. This is part of the reason why they keep saying like, oh, it's not real. It's not real. It's fake. Climate change is fake. Because if it's real, then you need, uh, you know. Um, using uh, electric or shifting over to renewable energy is actually helping China. Anyway. Bad stuff overall here. Nothing good that comes from that. Um, this is... Uh, should I even respond to this at this point? Steel Manning, the grifter chud's biggest point is that it, I'd have is the difference in marginal utility in a, of an additional commentator. Right when commentary space is more crowded, then again, that could probably be countered that the left is already saturated for the audience that exists for its relative how much money is injected to the right. Yeah. Um... The reality is that before I uh, fucking popped off, there wasn't necessarily a lot of or any left wing commentators that were as like overtly successful, though. So they keep literally pointing to. They keep pointing to me to say that it's a grift when there is not a second example. TYT is nowhere near. Where I'm at? What are you fucking crazy? People say the Young Turks, though. Like, what are you talking about? The Young Turks? That's like a corporation, basically. It's a company. There's no one. Anyway, so remember that the video is back up. 
Oh, we, we chirped at them and then they put it back up. Good for them. Kyle from Secular Talk is the only other one I can think of, but even then, it's like not the same. Anyway, um, 